Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and thank you um, for your work, both of you. Um, I want to ask a, a few questions about sort of this, um, our pivot to China, um, which I think, you know, in this place, in this town, there's hard to find bipartisan agreement on much. I think most people agree that China is our, however you want to call it, chief adversary, pacing threat, pacing challenge, however you want to wordsmith it. Um, I think that's real. Um, and I think there's, there's recognition, um, I think, in, in your work and in others that we have a capacity problem in effectively doing that. So I, I wanted to ask um, maybe Dr. Edelman, um, as it relates to this, sort of like priorities. How would you, if we, I guess for either one of you, what would you say, I mean, I think I have an idea of what the number is, the, the amount of money that we spend uh, in Europe. How much of our defense budget what, give me a ballpark of a dollar amount. Senator Schmidt, it's a little hard to disaggregate it because, you know, you've got command and control that, you know, covers a variety of, of sins. Um, but if you're getting at the question of, you know, um, do we need to spend less on defense of Europe and more in, in the Indo-Pacific, I, I think we've got to be able to do both. We've well, got but I'm, here's this point. We're not doing both. Um, and, and my argument isn't the withdrawal necessarily. My argument is, you know, some estimates would be 150 billion to 300 billion a year. Let's just, let's just use that as a number and, and people could debate what that actually is. I think for me, and I wanna get your thoughts on this, if Canada and Europe went from, so they're a combined total of 2% right now. If they went to 3.4% of spending on defense Per G, you know, as it relates to their GDP like we do, that's another $300 billion. And, I, and I'm just, how, have you guys grappled with this? Because to me, $300 billion allows us to, you know, continue to be, you know, an, a, an important ally for our European uh, allies, but also allows us to do the things that we need to do for the homeland in China. So what, how do you guys view that? I, I think, look, our allies need to spend more on defense. That's that's clear. Um, at the latest NATO summit, there's clearly a lot of talk of allies moving beyond 2% uh, of GDP, which now I think about two thirds of them are hitting to beyond 2% to 2.5%. Um, I think, you know, honestly, a sine qua non of them doing that is also seeing us make the investment, which is why in, in increasing our top line, which is one of the reasons we came to the conclusions we did uh, about you know the U.S. Uh, top line, but uh, obviously um, we need our allies to be producing more. Our our defense industrial base is in very bad shape, as we've discussed in our report. Uh, the European defense industrial base is is you know in even worse shape. Yeah. So we need uh, you know their industrial base. We need our industrial base. We need our allies in the Indo-Pacific, Australia, Japan. Uh, the Republic of Korea, Taiwan, all need to be stepping up because to match what Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran are doing is going to be on, beyond our ability to do it ourselves. We're going to have to do it you know, with, with allies. So there's going to have to be broad investment across, the, you know, across uh, all of the regions. And by the way, Middle East as well. We've got uh, you know, partners in the Middle East who could also uh, be doing more in that regard. I would just add that I think Europe is waking up to this, and I think there's a, a robust conversation in Europe about doing more, and even possibly setting up. I don't, I don't think this idea will ever t take, you know, b become a reality. Some kind of a European force, uh, but the point is spending more, leading more, uh, fighting Europe's fight well, uh, in Europe, and 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 I would add that we. Uh, embrace in this all elements of national power strategy that's the core of our report, uh, doing more with partners and allies. Think about the Indo-Pacific. The Secretary of Defense is there now, I think, with Secretary Blinken, talking about how to turn the, in, in, enhance the command that we have Yep. in Japan into a, a more robust command. It shouldn't just be- I have limited time. I want to get to one more question. Okay. I, I, so I appreciate, I, I think that's true. I think that uh, $300 billion would go a long way in allowing us to, to sort of, as we talk about priorities, and just to run through a couple, 
you know, a 320 million for the Gaza Pier would have gone a long way and almost fully funded, um, you know, the Guam missile defense project that we're not spending money on. So there, you could go over, you could go through this list about things of us being spread too thin and missing what our real priorities are. Um, and I don't have time to go through them all, but they're they're significant. I guess the final the final question of the time that I have is is this question of the industrial base. I mean, there's, to me, there's no question Europe needs to step up, and that's the part of a lot of conversations we have here. But as it relates to our industrial base, um, I supported the plus up. I think we should be spending more. What is the, if there's a couple of things that could be done to actually produce the things that we need? We're not, we don't have enough of what we need. Um, what, what are a couple of those top line suggestions that you would have that when people ask me back home, when I talk about this challenge, what are the things that can be done differently? Well, I mean, uh, members of this committee have done, you know, their job for sure in providing, for instance, authority for multi-year uh, procurement, which is, I think, one of the most important things because industry responds to, you know, the notion that they're going to have a, you know, long timeline to produce this, not just a spike and then go down. Um, it would be helpful if the appropriators would, would, on their side, make sure their dollars appropriated against that to, to do that for the department. Um, that, that, I know, is one of the problems that's held up the department until recently. I just add that we're not only talking about the defense industrial base, we're talking about the industrial base uh, and embracing fully the tech sector which has much more to contribute to the defense of our country than it is able to contribute. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Schmidt. 